I told that I would get less time to interact with you, but it happens. This is the Eucharistic program where I'm getting the maximum time. So things turned out a little different than expected. I don't know how you feel it. I think this is the third workshop I'm going to take it. Are you getting it all of those? Are you fed up? And we are very interested in the in this workshop. Okay, thank you. All right. How about you people? 50 50. Excellent. Thank you for being honest. Whenever you feel bored, please don't hesitate to raise your hand. Okay? And please keep it interactive. You know, to beat the boredom, what is the best way? Throw a difficult question at me. Then you can enjoy at the struggle that I'm going to. Yes. All right? Yes. All right. We had discussed a few things earlier. What were they? What is the first thing? What is a surefire principle or a surefire habit that can put you ahead of the rest? Delayed gratification. What is that? What is delayed gratification? What is it? I will give you a hint. Think of marshmallow. Then tell me what is delayed gratification? Like delaying your desires? Yes. Yeah. The thing is this. If you are given an immediate temptation, that is going to distract you <coughs> from the real long-term goal of your life. Have that discipline in your mind to take that temptation for that immediate gratification Every day. If you are able to desist it, for sure, that will make you better than others who simply cannot keep their, uh, their uh, control. Okay, I don't have the time to go through all those discussions. We and then what else we discuss? Types of emotions. Types of emotions. And yeah, that's the another way. What is the secret of the good attitude? How to develop the right attitude? You should learn from failures. Yes. Okay. Exactly. She at least someone is remembering and most of you are talking to you what has happened. Anybody can add on to it? Should you have a right attitude or aptitude? What is it more? Attitude. Because attitude takes it to attitude, not attitude. All right. But how can you develop? What is the technique to develop the right attitude? The mindset. Yes. What is the mindset? What exactly is in the mindset? Positive. Yes. Not bad. Positive. She hit it on the head. Okay, tell me. Stand up. Please stand up. Yeah. You're not bad. You just did something wrong. Right. What should you do? You should think of good, not bad. Huh? Yes. No. Tell me clearly. Someone please stand up and say. We should think of good and not bad. Not exactly. Learn from your mistake. Okay, but there is something more. The quintessential factor within it is slightly deeper. We and have to blame ourselves instead of blaming others. Uh, we have to. Yes. Uh, if some like, uh, we have to. We should. If we did something wrong, we should not blame ourselves. Yes. Okay. What is that? So ahead, sir. What is that? We should not blame ourselves if we did something wrong. Hmm. Instead, what should we do? Then uh, we should try for the better and improve. Correct. Yes, okay. Who has got somebody? Someone else, please stand up. Someone among the boys, please stand up. No one? I have to hold it. Okay, the last stand up, please. What is the secret of that? We should not blame ourselves. When? When should we do something wrong? When we do something wrong. No, when you fail. Okay. When you fail. Yeah. When you 
fail, okay, why you shouldn't blame yourself? Okay. You know what happens? You know why people commit suicide when they fail an exam? What makes them depressed? Family pressure. No family pressure. Because they think they did some mistake. They think they did some mistake. They think they are bad. Okay. They stop believing themselves. Yes. This is what I have told you the third time. And then of you can remember what went wrong. So what is the secret of the right attitude? Believe in yourself. Not exactly. Okay, okay that is a part, part of it. But what is the Blame thing? yourself. Huh? Don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. Instead, what should you do? You just think that you yeah, did you something mean. wrong and then um, that you're not bad. You okay, something. the golden principle is just this. Okay, please pay attention. Okay? Pay attention. Never ever think I am bad. Always think, I did something wrong. Okay? Is it too hard to remember? No. Is it too hard to practice? No. But if you practice, it will make a world of difference. Okay? Now, let us go. I don't want to ask you more questions because I think I will feel like, even before you get bored, I may walk out of the stage. <laughs> Okay, today let us go back to this. I have told you something about the EQ and EQ and learn. And we said today, the present day education is focusing on IQ, intelligence quotient. But we find
What we find is people with the same level of IQ, same level of education, they start together in life. They get into a job or they start with something. At that level, almost all of them, they will be on average at the same level of skills and intelligence and knowledge. Out of them, some will progress fast. Some will stay stable. And some will fall behind. What causes this difference between, among the people who have similar level of IQ, education, and intelligence? It is found to be emotional intelligence. And people have given it various names. So maybe it's slightly different. Like soft skills or social skills or the soft speaking style or whatever they just were, though impressive. But fundamentally, underlying all of it, or a large part of it, is what? What? Emotions, okay, emotional intelligence stuff. This is the significance of emotions, okay? I don't think you will hear about it anywhere else. All right? And if you understand it, this, this is not complex. This is not something that you cannot develop. But if you understand and develop it, you can save a lot of hardships later on in life. Ready? Please. Ready. Okay. First question. Where do our emotions reside? In our hearts. In, your, in our hearts. Okay. Where does our mind reside? Brain. In our brain. So emotions come from the heart and intelligence comes from the brain. Is it what you think? Yes. yes. Okay. That is the way we have thought about it for so many generations. Millennia, okay? And we didn't know anything better, and that is the reason our schools never thought anything about emotions. It was all left to artists and authors and everyone else. But things started changing in the second half of the 20th century, around 1950 or so. Brain imaging techniques called MRI and fMRI. And from that, brain activities could be monitored. And from there, it was found that the emotions as well, they reside in our brains itself. Okay? So in our brain, we have a thinking brain that's an intelligent brain. And we have a feeling brain as well. In our, uh, as well, a feeling mind as well, residing in our brain. And about this brain, Almost nothing was known about until up to around 1960, 70 or so. And in 1995, this book called Emotional Intelligence was written by Daniel Goldman, and there was a reason why he wrote that book. He went for his school reunion, and he found that there was a student, there was one of his classmates who was just an average student, who has become extraordinarily successful. There are so the people who scored the best mark, who are so intelligent and could solve any sort of problem, can, could answer any sort of questions. They were not anywhere near to that level this person had achieved. And when he came back to his office, he found a research paper that was titled Emotional Intelligence. And therefrom he started uh, learning about it and he published this book called Emotional Intelligence and it became a bestseller. So all of us heard about emotional intelligence but what it is, how to enhance it, I don't think there is much time. Okay? But this is an attempt to get into that level of details. Okay? How can you get a grip on it? How can you enhance it? Alright, so when we say there are two minds, one mind is the thinking intelligent brain and one mind is the feeling mind, is it really true? Let me ask you a question. You are now 
There are many places in the world where people are suffering a lot. Children like you, they have to go without food for many days. You know those kind of places? Yes. yes. You know that. So compared to that, how should we all be? Sad. Compared to the I mean, you are in grief. We are grateful. If we are grateful, so comparatively we should be happy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Shouldn't we? Yes. Okay? Now, who is your favorite footballer? Ronaldo. 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 Okay. Imagine Ronaldo's team lost. What will you do? You are sad, okay? But Ronaldo's team lost. Does it affect you anyway? No. Your, nothing. No. So logically and rationally, is there a need for you to be sad? No. No. That, but then why are we sad? We feel sad for them. <laughs> okay. You, you feel why? Why you need to be sad for Ronaldo? He's that kind of a person. But, but logically, if you think, should you be sad? No. 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 So logically, we are not sad. But still we are sad. It's our subconscious mind. It, that is the kind of subconscious brain we have. That is called an emotional brain. Okay? And now, if you can get a grip on that emotional brain, that will give you far better impact on life. Alright? And there are certain techniques that we can grasp. Okay? And if you feel bored, I am ready to stop it right now. Do you want me to continue or not? Yes. Continue. In that case, when I ask a question, you need to give an answer. Moreover, in between, you need to ask me some questions. Will you do that? Yes. Right. So in the last meeting, we said there are five components. Out of that, we will go through the first one first, that is self-awareness. What is emotional self-awareness? Do you know that? Let us go through this too. Once a fierce warrior went to a monk and said, teach me about heaven and hell. And the monk said, you are an idiot, I have no time to waste for you. This made the warrior very angry. He took he sold out and he was about to cut the head of the monk. At the time the monk said, this is hell. Hearing this, the warrior became repentant. He begged mercy. He pleaded. And then the monk said, this is hell. This is the difference self-awareness can make. The fierce warrior joined the soul was the person who was not aware that he was caught up in his emotion of hunger. Okay? And when he became aware of his own emotion, this is what he ended up as. So, the first step of emotional intelligence is to be aware about your own emotion. Okay. He said that there are three types of people in the world. The first type of people, they are self-aware. They, they know what the mood they are in, and they know their thought, what they are thinking about their own mood. So, what mood are you in? What mood are you in? Like, bored, okay? You are in the, you are bored now. Are you aware about it now? No. Now I have told you at least. Now you should be aware. Are you? Yes. You are now aware that you are bored. Okay? Does it make any difference in your interest level? Yes. Yes. This is what happens when you are aware about your own emotions. Okay? The second type is very good. Those people they are at the mercy of their own emotions. They do not know. Sometimes they may be uncontrollably happy, sometimes they may be uncontrollably sad, and they do not know what to do with that. Whatever they may feel, they are indulged in it. And the 
third type, they are accepting. They know which emotion they are in. They know that they are happy and they want to remain happy, so they just accept it that way. And there are some other people, they know they are sad and they don't want to change it. And so they are the people who we call depressed. depressed. Okay? So they accept whichever emotion they are in, they understand it and they keep it that way. And which category you want to be? Which category? The first one. The first step in emotional intelligence is to be self-aware. If today you are not self-aware, the first step is for you to try to become self-aware. And there are some ways you can do it. Okay? Until now, whatever we have discussed is theory. And now we are going to get into some practical things as to how to enhance your emotional intelligence and the first step of it, how to understand your own emotions. Okay? Um, there are two ways, two techniques for it. First is, if you put, put words to what you think that is yours. So Asleha, what mood are you? Like? Panda Panda. Um, interest? Sleepy? No. <laughs> okay. no. No, no, no. No, okay, then what mood are you? Fine, fine. Good, okay. The question here. If you feel bored, consciously think, I am feeling bored. After that, he has not lost his attention. Okay? So the first thing is, put in words what you are feeling at the moment. Okay? Janki, what are you feeling at this moment? You don't need to please me. Please be brutally honest. That way we will all learn and grow and enjoy. Yeah. Nervous. Nervous. Great. Okay? Someone else? Uh, kind of traumatized. Traumatized. Okay, what makes, what makes... Many people are like, these are dying. Some of them are like my relatives, some like symptoms of heart attacks. Like right. Yes, yes. Like yesterday, uh, the DTM died. Ah, okay. okay. Uh -huh. So, are you distracted? I'm not distracted, but like, I'm being more conscious about my future, that I need to focus on it. Oh, uh, you need to focus on what? On me becoming a surgeon. <laughs> All right. So, right this moment, we are discussing this thing. Yeah. And at that time, if you are thinking of becoming a surgeon, is it actually helping you? Yeah. Or I'm trying to gain this experience to apply it there. Okay, so that for that, what you need to do? Where should you pay attention at this moment? Yeah. Trying to multitasking. Uh, multitasking, <laughs> right? Good. <laughs> to be fair, we are not equipped to do multitasking. This is another thing that has come out of the MRI and FMRI. Or, or are you? Maybe you know better than me. Are we? Is our brain designed or wired to do multitasking? No, we are not the I9 13K. We are not. So, is it the right and the right thing? It's not right, but like sometimes it's like uncontrollable. Uncontrollable. So, so we need to be aware about yourselves. Right. So, what is the mood you are in? Me now? Yeah. I'm kind of interested in the speech. But before that, you are? Traumatized. Traumatized or dis distracted? Oh, whatever. Okay. The technique here is to put in words what you feel. All right? And the second is become an observer, but we will go through the examples of it. Okay. Now the a tricky question, okay? Messi is the dash of Argentinian World Cup winning football captain. Okay? You have to fill in the blank. Messi is the dad of <laughs> Don't show it to anyone. <laughs> Can I do that? No, you cannot. You have seen the answer. Keep it yourself. From this side, no answer. So no, 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 no. I didn't see it. You didn't see it. Okay, it's really small. It's really small, sir. 
Okay, so then those who have not seen it, you know, you have. Okay? Player. No. Messi is the player of Argentinian World Cup football, winning football captain. Like wow. the main guy? Yeah, uh, uh, no. Man. <laughs> huh? No. What's your name? I will give you another question. <laughs> Which state you belong to? Hi, Telangana. Hi? Telangana. Okay. Yes. Telangana is the dash of the state you belong to. EP education. Where is it? How do you feel? Uh, huh? Telangana is the is it the capital? Telangana is Hyderabad. Yeah. Huh? Is it captain? No. Messi is the dash of the captain. What? <laughs> Okay, the answer is I. Madam, what is the answer? No. Answer is very very simple. When I tell you, you will be surprised. Okay. No. Messi is the dash of the World Cup winning football captain. No. Name, name, name is the answer, okay? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Alright? Yes. But, but why it becomes so difficult for you? This is a simple answer, isn't it? Because we are not focused. No, we are focused. We are too we are much nervous. focused. We are nervous. No, we are not yes. nervous. What happens is we mistake the word for the object. Messi is just a word. It's a collection of what? Four letters. Okay? But we think it is the same as the first said. This is the power of words. Okay? So, if you put this power of words into your emotions or into becoming aware about your emotions, that will give you a very strong liver to understand and be self-aware, okay? So the first step is verbalize your emotion, okay? Please verbalize your current emotion. Yes, stand up there, please. I think a little bit of interest in it now. Little bit, good, thank you. How can it be made more interesting? Okay. okay. I will give you an example. Okay, this is something that I have experienced. My daughter, she was in the 12th grade and she had to prepare for the IIT entrance and she was working hard and one day after taking a lot of pieces, she was so tired and I don't know what happened. When I called, she was crying, she was complaining about the whole world. And particularly she was complaining about his about her little young brother. That never happened. But that day she said he is an annoyance, he is a new research, he's a disturbance. I had just read this particular chapter that day. So I had some newly acquired knowledge. I thought of putting it to good use. So I told her, you are feeling frustrated because of this long, difficult exams. And had you not been frustrated, you would, have, you would now be giving a kiss to your brother. And the change was dramatic. Tears were running down her eyes. And then with that, she started crying. So, the crying face changed to a cute face with a sweet smile. Just then, her emotion was described in words. Alright? So, what is this step? What is the first technique now in emotional self-awareness? Describe your emotions in words. Words. The first thing, you can call it by a name that will give you better control of it. 
because names are very powerful. Names will make our thought about anything much more structured. So if you think about your emotions in a ten, uh, very long sentence, that will give you little, make lesser amount of control. On the other hand, if you can call it by a short name, that will make your mastery over that emotion much more strong. But you may be thinking now, what shall I do if I don't know the name of my emotion? Call it by each other name you like. If you call it by the name X, that is fine, because it is your own emotion. I cannot come and tell you that you are calling it by your own name. Yes, it is like headache. We only understand what is our headache. Nobody else can realize it. So first step of emotional self-mastery is understand your emotion and try to describe it in words. Or oh, give it a name. Okay? Right. Now the second step in emotional mastery is to get rid of unwanted emotions. That's a simple step for that. Maybe some of you will be scared when you go to the grand finale to be the speaker. Would you be? Yes. 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 So that's called stage fright. Would you like mm -hmm. to gain a grip on that? Would you want to get a technique wherein you can get a better grip on that? Why not? Stage fright? Yes. yes. In 2016, there was a world champion of public speaking who just demonstrated a simple technique as to how to get rid of unwanted emotions. What he said is that, suppose you have unreasonable fear or hesitation or this kind of stage fright or exam fear or anything, the first thing you need to do is to acknowledge that I have that. Okay? And verbalize it. Put a name to it. So when you come on stage, next time, before that, if you feel that I am feeling stage fright, what should you do? What should you do? Name it. So yes. Acknowledge and put it in words. Say, I have stage fright, okay? When you verbalize it, there itself, there will arise a distance between yourself and your own emotion. So when you say that I have stage fright, what happens is, stage fright suddenly becomes nothing. It will become nothing, but at that time, it becomes an object, separate from yourself, isn't it? I know I have stage fright. When you say something, when you verbalize your own emotion, that there itself, it creates a slight distance. Uh, can we tell it in our mind or is it important? In your mind itself is fine. Only thing is that, call it by a name, verbalize it. Okay? What happens is, when you verbalize it, it comes to your conscious mind. Otherwise, it remains in the subconscious, mind. the other mind, which you said that was in your heart. But that's not in your heart. But still, in a part of the brain where we are, what, we are not consciously aware of, but when you verbalize it, you become suddenly consciously aware of it. And the next thing is, you have to take an object, an inanimate object in hand. Okay? Now imagine you have some unwanted feeling to get rid of. Okay? You want to get, imagine you want to get rid of your sleepiness. Okay? Take something and yeah, keep it. Take it. All of you take it. Okay. 
Are those? Sleepiness. 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 Yes. Are those anything? No. What? Nervousness. Nervousness. Great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Take this. Right now. Right now. Take it now. Now for emotion, I'm feeling that I want to get. Yes. Or oh, some emotion that is a constant companion for you that you want to get to know. Which other? Okay. Mm -hmm. Take an object like this, which is safe to break a drop on the ground. Okay. So think that this is that emotion you want to get to know. Okay. So if it is nervousness, imagine that this is your nervousness. Or if it is stage fright, imagine this is your stage fright. Or this is your boredom. Or this is your sleepiness. Okay. Just imagine so and then observe it. Okay? Do not argue with it. Do not negate it. Do not what? Try to run away from it. Neutrally observe it. So this is the emotion, this is the nervousness or stage fright. You want to get it off? Now look at imagine that this is that emotion and then neutrally observe it. When you observe for some time, you will feel that that emotion is weakening. Do you feel that? You feel, okay? Yes. yes. When it has weakened, stop. Just stop. Okay? Do you want to do it once again? Or did you understand? I got the point. Huh? I got the point. You got the point, right? Yeah. Once again, okay? I will now I will tell you once and after that we will try to do it once. Okay. The steps are like this, okay? First identify the emotion you want to get to know. Okay? Second, call it by name. It's your name. Third, take an object like this in hand. Oh, imagine this is that emotion you want to get rid of. Then observe it neutrally. Do not argue with it. Do not run away from it. Do not negate it. Do not think that it is not there. Just observe it. As you neutrally observe it, you will feel that emotion is getting weaker. And once it weakens somewhat, when you feel that it has weakened sufficiently, just stop it. Can you do that? Yes. Okay. So, I think I am also feeling sleepy like you. So this is my sleepiness. I am trying to get rid of. What about you? Whatever it is, okay? Take this. Give it the name and imagine this is that emotion you want to get rid of. Do that. Observe it neutrally. Once you feel it is weakened. Drop. Okay. I have seen it. it uh, I don't know whether it works in. But I have seen that this works for some others and also me. Okay. If it doesn't work, maybe there are some other techniques. I don't know too much about it. I am not a psychologist. I am not an expert in emotional intelligence. All that I have in my 25 long years of experience as an engineer in management, in data science, in so many other fields, but nowhere I learned it. Nobody taught me. But I have seen its impact everywhere I went. So, with that I think my time is over. You have to ask me questions. <coughs> Does it work like when I imagine stuff and then let it fall and imagine that sound of me falling? Or like it needs to be an object I can see now? Imagine, I don't know, maybe that will also work. And then the same technique, like I can just focus on, like the technique depends on focusing on something, then just letting it go away. Like me focusing, as I can say, on the on this PC and suddenly imagining this is sadness, and then just like when I feel it's weakened, I just switch up to you. Maybe it could be, it could work. Just try it and see whether it works for you. Yeah. It worked for me because sometimes, like, you know, I used to study for a PDF, and when I forgot that piece of information, I just like pretend to look at it like this, and it comes back. Yeah.
Yeah, that is it. If you succeed, <coughs> if you succeed in understanding that emotion as distinct from yourself, that itself is the first step. Once you have right to, once you have managed to do that, that means you have succeeded, or you have succeeded at least in the first step. And then getting rid of it is easy. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions? No other questions. I want two more questions. Yes, I got more time. She said to show me the right until <laughs> I need two more questions. Have you understood everything? Then no more questions, okay? Yes. Yeah, there is a question, please. Yes. What if we do all the things you told us, but still the emotion finds its way back to us? Do it again. And the next thing, I mean, maybe you might have to, be, it may not go away in the first attempt itself. And in many cases, this technique may not be effective. What you can do is you can consult some experts in the psychology. It's not a bad thing. I have consulted psychologists as psychiatrists as well. So, thing is that there are many different techniques, and it may work, and if it doesn't work, don't lose hope. Consult someone who knows better. Okay? Good question. All right? Yes. Yes. yes back to nuclear of the day. Mm -hmm.